Right now at noon, Oklahoma lawmakers are advancing a bill that would ban emergency contraception and create a database of people who've had abortions. And we are looking pretty good. A light breeze, clear skies with just a few clouds for the time being. It is really feeling like spring out there. We'll have a look at that forecast coming up. Plus, students drive their tractors to school for FFA week. The four states most watched news starts now. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us on KOAM News at Noon. I'm Caitlin O'Shaughnessy. In today's top story, police arrest a Florida man suspected of election fraud in Kansas. Authorities say 30-year-old George Andrews of Dade City, Florida, forged signatures on a petition to make the organization referred to as No Labels an officially recognized political party in Kansas. Andrews is charged with two counts of election perjury and 28 counts of election forgery. He was arrested in Florida on February 10th and is awaiting extradition to Kansas. Oklahoma lawmakers are advancing a bill that would ban emergency contraception and create a database of people who have had an abortion. A state house committee last week advanced the bill. If passed, it would require a prescription to access Plan B and other forms of birth control. It would also allow civil lawsuits against anyone who helps a woman get an abortion and create a state database to track who had the procedure. Opponents say the bill could make contraception inaccessible to many women and would violate the privacy of citizens. And a Joplin family is currently without a home after a fire heavily damaged theirs yesterday afternoon. It happened just after 2 p.m. yesterday in the 2800 block of South Connecticut Avenue. Officials say everyone made it out safely, but the home is heavily damaged inside. And we've got ourselves a very spring like day out there. This is the live look Modoc camera 32nd in range line looking back to the west. Mostly clear skies, not mostly clear roadways, but it is the noon lunch hour out there as folks get their lunch hour underway or maybe just grabbing some afternoon shopping or meeting up with some friends. Either way, it's a great day to be outside our camera on the Cornell Complex downtown Joplin. If you look close enough, you can see we have a few high clouds. So this is that mostly clear sky situation and these clouds will eventually begin to increase much later this afternoon into the evening hours across the area. Yesterday started at 30 right where we should be made it up to 57. So only six degrees above normal. That's not bad, but our temperatures are going to begin to go way above normal as we head through the rest of today, as you can see, and into tomorrow before we see some changes. And and this is the temperatures around the area sitting at 66 Chanute, 65 Neotache, Independence, uh, Sedan, Nawada, 64 is Oswego, Welch, Miami, 61 in Pittsburgh, 63 in Joplin, 64 in Fort Scott, 62s Lamar and Carthage, as well as Neosho, and out to the east a little cooler, 61 Stockton, Monette, and Cassville. We've got thunderstorms on the way. We have the potential for maybe some strong thunderstorms out there as well, and that's going to have at least a brief impact on our temperatures. Also, we're going to have a full look at all of that, break it all down for you in the complete forecast, which that's coming up here in just a few more minutes. Caitlin. All right. Thanks, Chris. Well, Kansas Governor Laura Kelly proclaimed the week of February 17th through the 24th as FFA week throughout the Sunflower State. Some students at Columbus, Kansas are celebrating FFA week by bringing their crop cruisers to class. Well, Monday, February 19th is drive your tractor to school day and some students at Columbus High School are showing off their roll routes. It's just like it's really great for the community. You know, we live in like a rural community, so there's a lot of farmers and stuff and I work for one. It's just you got to bring a tractor. Everybody else does it here and just a lot of my buddies do it. It's fun. Drive your tractor to school day is the culmination of National Future Farmers of America Week, celebrating the impact of agriculture. Uh, each year we try to do some activities to help promote agriculture and uh, on this FFA week. It's a tradition we've had for a long time here and just showing uh, support for Columbus FFA. And, uh, they've really they kept it going. I think we had nine or ten tractors this morning. And while a tractor trip to school might not be the smoothest ride. It's a lot slower, a lot louder, and a lot wider. I mean, coming down, just coming down the road here, it was difficult this morning because I was having to swerve away from other cars. And Most of these high schoolers are more comfortable behind this piece of machinery than a regular car. I learned how to drive like 
I guess a hydrostat tractor, which is easy, just like a car, but probably a tractor first. Oh, uh, well, I'd probably learn how to drive a tractor first. I grew, I've grown up on a farm. I work on a farm every day after school. Uh, it's just something that's come natural. In Columbus, Kansas, Elise Snowy, KOAM News. There are 49 members in the Columbus, Kansas FFA chapter. To learn more about FFA Week, visit our website at koamnewsnow.com. And that's a look at today's top stories and weather in the four states region. Up next on KOAM News at Noon. On average, more than 325 Americans are shot every day. So far in 2024, we've had more mass shootings than we've had days in a year. We take an in-depth look at America's gun violence. And later, we're making loaded barbecue potato casserole in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Stay tuned. So far in 2024, we've had more mass shootings than we've had days in a year. Data from the Gun Violence Archives showed 51 mass shootings as of today. Last week's Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl celebration was another stark reminder of a joyous moment in America marred by gun violence. CBS's Mark Strassman has more. Gunshots, panic on parade in Kansas City, a Super Bowl celebration hijacked, another American moment shattered. I was just crying a lot. Yeah. yeah. You had to have been terrified. Yeah, I was terrified. I was traumatized. With today's gun violence, there is no sacred space. Inside this Houston megachurch last Sunday, a woman stormed in firing an AR-15. She was shot and killed by off-duty police officers after a running gun battle. It's, it's scary. It is. It's scary. On average, more than 325 Americans are shot every day. Last year saw 656 mass shootings, defined as four or more victims. I traveled the world and felt a lot safer there than I did in my own city. We're twitchy, bullet by bullet, gun violence grafts onto everyday stresses. People are experiencing vicarious trauma. Dr. Arthur Evans, CEO of the American Psychological Association. How significant is this stress? We have about a third of people in the country who are saying that their behavior has changed because of mass shootings. Right after mass shootings, Evans says 75% of Americans report significant stress and that parents of young children especially have concerns about their kids' safety. When you're talking about churches and synagogues and shopping malls, we have less of an ability to distance and, and, and I think that has a different kind of impact on us. On the polarizing issue of guns, a majority, 56%, favor more restrictions, according to Gallup. I'm a gun owner. It should be, um, you know, harder for certain individuals to obtain a gun. Owning guns makes millions of Americans feel more in control. But with gun violence, anxiety climbs because people feel they've lost control. Why haven't I got shot? I don't know. Guns in crowds have become a new American anxiety. Kansas City, a reminder of Denver's NBA championship parade last year when two people were shot. People just can't go buy a gun or an assault rifle and go kill people. I mean, like, how many more people have to die before we change that? Mark Strassman, CBS News, Houston. Republicans and Democrats are grappling with how to respond to Russia following the death of opposition leader Alexei Navalny and recent gains Russia made in the war against Ukraine. Natalie Brand has more details from the White House. President Biden said this week he's considering potential consequences for Russia in response to the death of opposition leader Alexei Navalny. We already have sanctions moving and we're considering additional sanctions, yes. Navalny's death comes as Russia has gained some ground in its war against Ukraine, taking over a key city in the east. The White House blames congressional inaction. They're making a big mistake not responding. It's unclear when the U.S. House would consider a foreign aid package for Ukraine. House members left Washington for a nearly two-week recess without taking up the Senate's bipartisan package. Now there's a new effort of bipartisan lawmakers trying to come up with a smaller foreign aid package that also combines the southern border. The House proposal, it depends on how it's written, makes perfect sense to me. But the question now, will former President Donald Trump lobby against the bill? He opposed the Senate's bipartisan border security compromise initially linked to foreign aid, which collapsed earlier this month. President Trump told Congress don't pass anything until after November. 
We can't wait that long. Former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley also took aim at her rival for a lack of response to Alexei Navalny. The GOP frontrunner finally posted his comment on Monday, saying Navalny's death has made him more aware of what's happening in the U.S. He's going to side with a dictator who kills his political opponents. Despite sharpening her attacks on Trump, Haley still remains behind by double digits in the latest polls ahead of Saturday's GOP primary in South Carolina, where she formerly served as governor. Natalie Brand, CBS News, The White House. Still to come on KOAM News at Noon, we see what's cooking with Mr. Food. But first, we are tracking thunderstorm chances as we head into the middle of this week. We'll take a look at that in the forecast when we come back. Welcome back to the KOAM News at Noon. So it is a very spring-like day across the area today. We've had beautiful weather today. We had pretty decent weather yesterday. Uh, we've got pretty decent weather today. Let's take a quick look outside. This is the MoDOT camera at 32nd and range line in Joplin. And you can see we are looking pretty darn good out there. We take a look from our camera on top of the Cornell Complex downtown Joplin. There's those high clouds. So we talked about this by about this time. We were going to be what we call mostly clear. And that's what this is. Just a handful of clouds out there. And our camera seventh and range line. A few more clouds off to the north. Just a handful out there. A beautiful day. And look at that. 62 degrees. So we are now, what was it, 11 degrees above where we should be for this time of year? Not that we're complaining. South breeze at about six miles an hour. It is a picturesque day to be outside. I tried to get them to move the news desk outside earlier. They just wouldn't do it. Said it's too heavy. Also something about it's really, really bolted to the ground and stuff like that. I don't know. They just wouldn't do it. So here we are inside. But if you can be outside, be that way. Look at this mid 60s out to the west. We've got low 60s as you head a little further east. But regardless, all of us in the 60s out there. Now, we've got those thunderstorm chances. I want to take some time to talk about those. So as we go through the rest of our Tuesday, we're going to have the clouds increasing later this afternoon and especially through the evening and overnight and be mostly cloudy come Wednesday. Wednesday, it's going to be breezy. Winds gusting out of the south up to 25, but it's still going to be warm. In fact, it's going to be another almost 10 degrees warmer than where we are right now. We're going to go into the low 70s by tomorrow afternoon. Then we go into the overnight hours after midnight. Here comes some thunderstorm chances. Now there's still some differences on the exact track of potential thunderstorms here. We've got them traveling a little further north, but I've seen some where they go a little further south. Either way, we are looking at the potential for some strong to low grade severe thunderstorms. So we're not talking anything crazy, no wild outbreaks, nothing intense, but some hail would be possible with these storms. And by about four or five o'clock in the morning, they're gone. Here's a look at what that risk level looks like. We've been showing it to you. It's been adjusted again. It's still in the same general area here, but it's north and south and west extents are being adjusted every so often. But as you can see, it's also the lowest risk level on that map at the low end. And again, the chance is for maybe some hail. Now I know this says tomorrow and a quick reminder. If you didn't see us during the morning show for the storm prediction center that puts these things out there day of stuff goes until about two o'clock in the morning the next day. So this is really covering from tomorrow night into 2 a.m. Thursday, and that's where that chance for those stronger storms will be. As for the rest of today, 66 out there, mid upper 60s, southwest breeze at about five to 10 miles an hour. Winds pick up a bit tonight, gusting to 20 temperatures, upper 40s right around 50. And again, tomorrow, upper 60s, low 70s out there. And as we look at the extended forecast Thursday, we do cool back a little bit. We're going to be back in the low 60s and we warm right back up an absolutely beautiful weekend. Look at that sunny skies, a few clouds Sunday, 70. And then we're watching another system Monday into Tuesday with some showers and thunderstorms out there. I'm still keeping a close eye on that. But one thing it does for sure is it kicks our temperatures down to about average by next Wednesday and Thursday. All right, that looks pretty good, Chris. We'll stick around because we're making loaded barbecue baked potato casserole in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. We'll be right back. It's time to check in with Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Today he's making a loaded barbecue baked potato casserole. Take a look. There are some days when we don't mind cooking everything from scratch. And then there are days when we're pressed for time and we need to use a few supermarket shortcuts. 
And when our shortcut recipes taste as good as our from scratch versions, all the better. So let me show you a loaded main dish that does just that. The first thing we do is place a package of store-bought mashed potatoes in a microwave safe bowl. Starting with these saves us at least half an hour. Now we add some cheddar and Monterey Jack cheese, half a package of cream cheese, a bit of salt and pepper, and we pop this into the microwave to warm up. Once it's hot, we stir in some sour cream and spoon it into a baking dish. Now, we turn this into a main dish by topping it with some shredded cooked chicken, a drizzle of barbecue sauce, and some crumbled bacon. Right before it goes into the oven, sprinkle the top with some cheddar cheese to make it even more cheesy delicious. When it comes out, it's ready to serve. It's kind of like a southwestern style upside down chicken shepherd's pie. To get this Roundem Up recipe, all you have to do is visit our website and type in Loaded Barbecue Baked Potato Casserole. I'm Howard of the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a super shortcut way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. You can find this recipe on our website at koamnewsnow.com. Now here's a look at the four state market prices. All right, so we are looking to be warm today, mid upper 60s, low 70s tomorrow, breezy thunderstorms. Some could be strong, low grade severe with some small hail Thursday morning. We'll keep an eye on that for you. A little cooler Thursday, fantastic weekend, back to the 70s, more shower and thunderstorm chances to kick off the next work week. All right, sounds pretty good. And coming up tonight at five, it's cold flu and COVID season. If you feel like you've been coughing for weeks, you're not alone. Now a new report looks at just how long it's typical for that hacking to stick around and what you can do about it. Plus, students at Liberal High School experience the virtual reality impaired driving and texting simulator. And we meet the twin sisters teaching at Joplin School District. Join us for those stories and more on KOAM News at 5. Certainly got a lot coming up tonight on Absolutely. the KOAM News at 5. Lots to look forward to. We want to thank you so much for joining us for the KOAM News at Noon. We'll Have see you back here at five. <laughs> yes, we yes, will. We will. Have a great day. Maybe.